Welcome to Mapping for Quake with Trench Broom. This is all about clipping your level. I'm gonna show you some examples from a map that I made over a period of two years. And I just wanna give you a heads up that you're gonna see some mistakes, maybe out of the corner of your eye, some bad brush work, uh, some things that I've told you not to do in this map. <laughs> because I made it, I started it a few years ago when I was at a different skill level. I guess I'm insecure about, you know, you seeing something really bad in the background while I'm talking. So that's why the map is old. I'm very proud of it and it is linked below and I hope you'll check it out and play it. And also the map files included in that file. So you can take a look and see some of the mistakes I made. And you can also see how I did things right and some triggers and all kinds of cool entity stuff that was fun to create. So enjoy the map if you play it. So what is a clip brush? Well, it's simply a brush with the clip texture applied to it. And what happens is it creates an invisible barrier for both monsters and for players as well. The thing to remember is clip brushes do not block projectiles. So if you're firing a weapon, it goes right through a clip brush. So I'm in my map file for End of Solace, and uh, here we go. Here's the very first thing you see when you spawn into the level. And there's a clip brush there. I'm going to hide it. And what you see here, and I'm going to hide this blood water too, actually. And what you see here is this uneven terrain. And I found through playtesting that it you know, the player would get stuck on it. So it's easy enough, I made this simple ramp shape to kind of guide the player up very smoothly. And it's really a good practice. If you have anything uneven that the player can get stuck on, you're gonna wanna smooth out the path for the player. These vertical beams here caused a problem when I was play testing, because this is a kind of a small little arena and I kept getting stuck. And it was really hard to kind of get the angle of these right. If you make them too long, right? If you make them too, it, it just, you can, you'll notice them. If you make them too short, they don't help as much. So it is a tree, it is kind of a, a trial and error kind of process and then you'll eventually get the right angle. Another reason to use clip brushes is to keep players out of areas that you don't want them in. Uh, players will rocket jump and use, uh, you know, expert tricks to get to places that you really don't want them to, or your geometry won't block them. In this case, this door here just wasn't good enough at keeping players out of the final exit. So I had to kind of keep uh, a, a clip wall in this position until later and I triggered it. I'm going to show you how to do that towards the end of the video. I don't want to stop down and do that yet, but stay tuned for that. In my giblets video, that's linked down below, there's another really great example of that keep out concept where I show an example of how you can get stuck in an area of a map and how you block that area with a clip brush. So I'd take a look at that giblets video if you haven't seen it. Another way I've used clip brushes in the past is to smooth out stairs. So for example, this is a 16 unit step. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. The player can traverse these just fine. There's, there's, it's a really a kind of a matter of preference, but I kind of tend to like eight unit steps. The reason being is when you go up and down a 16 unit step, the player's point of view bounces a little bit too much for my taste. You see all kinds of shapes and sizes of steps so that it's not really a rule, but again, it's just my personal preference. So in this case, I used clip brushes every other step, you know, and you can't see it, but it does make an impact. You could use a ramp uh, to get the same effect, but that's a little too smooth. It, there is no kind of movement of the player's point of view in that case. And one other drawback of ramps is that you would slide down a ramp. If you just stood still, you'll start sliding, and you certainly wouldn't do that if you're standing on steps. So it's not a good answer. Another common situation where you use clip brushes is when you're using the brush entity Funk Illusionary. So we haven't really gone over Funk Illusionaries before and we haven't gone over fence textures, but let's just put it this way. Let me hide clips for a second. I'm gonna hide the clip brushes. And so you see this funky color here. This is uh, part of the Quake palette that is transparent. So in this case, these are grates. So these are Funk Illusionaries. In order for this to work, you have to use a Funk Illusionary. The thing about a Funk Illusionary is it's like a, it's kind of like a secret wall in, uh, in Doom, you pass right through it. It looks like a wall, but you'd pass right through it. So in this case, you're using these transparency textures. You need to use a Funk Illusionary, so you have to put a clip brush over the top of it so the players don't fall through, and the monsters as well. So let's get back to this kind of more advanced stuff I was talking about. I needed this clip 
brush to be temporary. And the way you do that is you create uh, a clip brush and then you make it a funk wall. So you go to uh, brush entity, funk wall. And that turns the brush into a dynamic entity that you can target. So if it has a target name, you can kill it. Now we haven't gone through kill targets before, but this is very easy stuff. So I'll just walk you through it. There was a final battle in another room. I don't want to spoil it for you. All those monsters were targeting this counter and we've gone over counters in the entity tutorials. So all, you kill all the monsters, it triggers this counter. This counter in turn will target a trigger relay that I use to do a couple different things. But in this case, you notice up here, this is called kill target. And kill target is just basically what it sounds like. It's going to remove from the game whatever you target. So what would happen is the walls, you know, is now gone. These doors lower. And then you're able to exit the level. So this was just a quick tutorial video to kind of give you the basics for clip brushes, but don't underestimate how important they are. You really should be using them in your maps. If you're play testing and you get stuck on the littlest thing, go ahead and put a clip brush, smooth it out. Your maps will be all the better for, you know, just that extra little effort. So that's it for the clip brush tutorial. I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in and subscribing and all that jazz. I really appreciate all the great feedback. I've been pretty busy with work, so that's why it took a while to get this latest tutorial out. So just bear with me, but I think this summer I'll be able to do a lot more content. We'll get back on a real steady clip of at least one a week, sometimes two a week. And thanks for tuning in. We'll We'll see you in the next tutorial.